Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, let's learn what is an observable and where and when do we use it. Now, in a very simple terms, we use observables to perform asynchronous operation and handle asynchronous data. Another way of performing asynchronous operation in JavaScript and handling asynchronous data is by using promises. So, we can handle asynchronous operation in Angular using either promises or observables. Now, what is asynchronous operation and asynchronous data? Well, we already know that JavaScript is a single threaded programming language. That means the code is executed line by line and once the execution of one code is complete, then only the next code in the program will be executed. Right. So if a task takes long time in its execution, for example, let's say we are making an HTTP request to the server. In that case, it is going to take some time, right? So the next statement after that HTTP request will have to wait for its execution. It will only get executed when the HTTP request completes. So we can say that the synchronous code is blocking in nature. And this is where asynchronous programming comes into picture. An asynchronous code executes in the background without blocking the execution of the code in the main thread. Okay, so an asynchronous code is non-blocking. That means we can make HTTP request asynchronously. In that case, it will run in the background and the next code after that HTTP request will be executed immediately in the main thread. So in this case, the HTTP request will not block the execution of next line of code. Okay, so using asynchronous program, we can perform long network requests without blocking the main thread. Now, again, there are two ways through which we can do that, either using promises or observables. So let's first quickly understand the difference between a promise and an observable. So let's say we are creating an application which needs some data from the server. So let's say we are requesting a list of users from the server. In that case, from our application, we will send a request to the server. Now the server will get this data either from the database or from the web API. Now let's say the data which we are requesting is huge. In that case, the server will take some time to gather that data. Okay, so let's say we have 1 million user in our database. So in order to get that 1 million user, the server will take some time to gather all the data. And once the data is available, it will create a response and it will send that data with the response to the client. So here, the server gathered all the data and once the data is ready, it sent all that data at once to the client. And this is how a promise works. A promise promises us some data and it provides us that data over a period of time. And a promise provides us the data once the complete data is ready. Now remember that here, the data can be the actual data which we have requested for, or it can also be an error. Okay, so let's say if there is some network issues, if there is no internet connection, in that case also, the promise will return us a data, but that data will be the error message. Okay, it will be an error object. All right, so this is how a promise works. Okay, this is how a promise deals with the asynchronous data. Now let's see how an observable deals with the asynchronous data. So again, let's say, we are making an HTTP request to the server to get all the users from our database. So again, the server will collect the data from the database or from the web API. Now remember that the observable will not wait for the complete data to be available. An observable streams the data. Okay, so it will send the data in packets. Okay. When some of the data will be available, it will send that data and then it will again gather the rest of the data and it will send it with the response. So here you can see the observable is streaming the data. It is sending the data in packets, in chunks. It is not waiting for all the data to be available and then send the data at once. It is streaming the data. And that is what the difference between a promise and an observable is. A promise returns us all the data at once. It provides us a single data, but an observable streams the data. Okay, it provides us multiple values. Another difference between a promise and an observable is that a promise promises you some data. It will certainly give you that data, even if there is no code using that data. But in case of an observable, the observable will only provide the data 
if there is someone to use that data. If there is no one which is using that data, in that case, the observable will not send that data. Remember this point. And the next difference is a promise is native to JavaScript. It is provided by JavaScript language. But observable is not a native feature of Angular or JavaScript. It is provided by another JavaScript library which is called as RxJS. Alright, so we can say that an observable is a function that converts ordinary stream of data into an observable stream of data. You can think of observable as a wrapper around the ordinary stream of data. In simple words, an observable streams the data. It sends the data in packets or you can say it sends the data in chunks. It does not send all the data at once. It streams the data. All right. Now I mentioned that observable is not native to Angular or JavaScript. It is provided by another JavaScript library, which is RxJS. So the RxJS is a JavaScript library that allows us to work with asynchronous data stream. And RxJS is a short form for reactive extension library for JavaScript. Now, if you want to learn more about RxJS, you can visit this reactivex.io web page. Here, you will find everything related to reactive programming in JavaScript. All right. Now, RxJS has two main players. The observable, which is the stream of data, and the observer, which is going to use that data. Now, in order to make this observer use the data emitted by this observable, the observer has to subscribe to that observable. Okay, so we can also say that an observer is the subscriber of that observable. All right, now let's go ahead and let's create a very simple observable to understand how an observable works. In order to use this observable, we need to import RxJS library in our Angular application. And this RxJS library is installed automatically when we create a new Angular project. Okay, so we don't need to install it manually. It will automatically get installed when we create a new Angular project. All right, here I have created a brand new Angular project called Angular Observables. And in this project, I have not made any changes. So if I go to the source folder, if I expand this app folder here, we have one component, which is this app component. And in the HTML file, I have not removed anything. Okay, so we have the default HTML and CSS here. Now let's go to app component.ts file. So here we have this app component class. And the first thing which we need to do is we need to import observables from RxJS library. So for that, we can say import observable from RxJS. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's create a new observable. So for that, let's first create a variable. Let's call it maybe my observable. Okay. And to create a new observable, we can use observable constructor. For that, we can say new observable. Now to this observable constructor, we need to pass a callback function. And this callback function will receive an argument, which will be the observer. And this argument will be injected by RxJS library. And this observer is nothing but the subscriber which is waiting for the data. Okay. Now inside this callback function, let's first log a message using console.log and let's say observable starts. Okay. Then let's go ahead and let's emit some data. And to emit the data, on this observer, we can call next method. Okay, and it will emit some data. Let's emit this string value one from here. In the same way, let's also emit other values. So let me copy this line, uh, maybe five times. Okay, and let's change these values. So from here, let's emit two, let's emit three, four, and five. So this is the data which this observable is going to emit which it is going to stream. All right, so our observable is ready. Now, this observable will only emit the data if there is a subscriber. Okay, if there is no subscriber, in that case, the observable will not emit the data. So let's create a subscriber for this my observable. 
For that, let's first go ahead and let's implement ng on init method. And in order to use this ng on init method, let's also implement it from on init interface. So let's use this implements keyword and we want to implement on init. Okay, and in order to use this on it, we also need to import it from Angular Co. All right, inside this ng on init, let's go ahead and let's subscribe to this observable. For that, let's say this dot my observable dot subscribe. Now, this subscribe method takes three optional parameters, and these parameters are callback functions. So the first callback function is next. The second callback function is error and the third callback function is complete and all these three parameters are optional. Okay, and all these three are callback functions. Now we will talk about this error and complete in our next lecture. So for now, let's remove it because these are optional parameters. And this next parameter is a callback function which gets executed every time this next method returns a value. Okay. So in this example, when we are subscribing to this my observable, this next callback function will be called five times because this observable is going to emit five data. It is going to stream these five data. Okay, so here let's specify a callback function using this arrow function syntax. And this callback function is going to receive the data which the observable has returned or emitted. Okay. Remove this. All right. So in this well parameter, we have the value which the observable has emitted. Now, how do we want to use that value? For now, let's say we simply want to log that value in the console. For that, let's say console.log and let's log that value. Okay. With this, let's save the changes and let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console. And here you can see the data has been emitted by the observable and it has been logged here. As you can see. Okay, now this data has been streamed one by one. So for example, first this data was emitted, after that this data was emitted, after that this data was emitted and so on. Okay, so they, the data has been streamed here. All these data were not emitted at once. They were streamed. And this is how an observable works. Now let's do one thing. Let's emit these data after a certain time interval. So for that, Let's go ahead and let's use the set timeout method. Okay, so the set timeout method takes a callback function and a time interval. So for the first data, let's specify the time interval as one second. And what do we want to return? We want to return this data one. So let me copy it from here and let's paste it here. Okay, and let's copy this same set out set timeout method four more times. And let's comment this code here. I'll keep it for your reference. All right, now here we want to emit two. Here we want to emit three, four, and five. And let's also change the time interval here. So we want to emit this second data after two seconds. We want to emit the third data after three seconds, the fourth data after four seconds, and the fifth data after five seconds. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And you will notice that first one is emitted, then two, then three, four, and five. Okay, so in this way, these data have been emitted after a certain time interval. All right. So this is how we can create an observable in Angular or in JavaScript. Now, there are also other ways of creating an observable, and we will talk about it in our next lecture. So this is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.